excuse me? We're just, Becca has to turn on the camera. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you'll call the roll. Here. Uh, Jeff Davison isn't here yet, but I believe he's on his way. Oh, good. Okay. Item number two, um, public comment. Do we have any public comment this morning? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go ahead to the consent agenda, and you'll see all of the items 3A through 3F, and you can read what they are. Um, because we have several questions, oh no, that's on the claim summary. Um, on the claim summary, we're going to be calling or emailing you, Rebecca, okay. instead of taking up time, okay? okay? Okay. I'd like to move 3D. Thank you, Scott. Excuse me, Scott? He wants to talk about 3D. D is in dog. Well, the meeting schedule. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to make a motion to pull 3D and approve um, the list of consent agenda. I will second the revised motion. Okay. Director Cicada? Yes. Director Ratterman? Yes. Director Thomas? Yes. President Hunter? Yes. <coughs> oh. Perfect timing. Scott, do you want me to take this one? Yes, yes, go ahead, Nicole. So this, um, the, the proposal in this in the packet was to cons essentially consolidate the November meetings due to the holiday um, and have the board meeting on November 18th. The other reason behind it that we haven't talked about yet, Director Raderman, um, was November 11th is a holiday, it's Veterans Day, and it is typically a floating holiday, so staff can accommodate the board if we want to keep the meeting on the 11th. Um, but that was the other part of the part of the rationale for um, moving it to the 18th. Um, the, con the potential conflict is a camera, a regularly scheduled camera meeting that same afternoon. We haven't had a camera meeting in I think it's at least the last two quarterly meetings that have been canceled. Um, so it's been quite some time since camera has met. And so we do not yet have a response, Director Raderman, um, from other members of camera that we reached out to. So um, we, we, still, we still aren't sure, I guess, whether or not that camera meeting is, is going to take place on the 18th or not. One, one idea could be that we, um, if camera still wants to meet on the 18th, that uh, we, su we suggest that they change the time to the morning, and we could accommodate both board meetings that day, uh, so we're not having a, a board meeting on a holiday. Mm -hmm. May I make a suggestion? Um, you said the employees could maybe do a floating holiday, take another day. Would they be after we keep the 11th? Maybe they would prefer to have a day off on a Monday or a Friday to so get a three-day holiday. You know what I mean? Weekend, and then we just keep the 11th, and we just cancel the one we could and if have. somebody wants that Wednesday, then absolutely let's do what they want. But I know with me, I kind of like to do a Friday. <laughs> well, I don't know. I haven't reached out because we would have to look at what's on the agenda that day as well to make sure everybody's available. Uh, but one way or another, we could cover it if we wanted to keep it on the 11th. You're not in. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> 
I got a, a couple things on, on this. We haven't had a camera meeting all, all the year, and it's uh, and I think it is it is time. I think to see that group just go to go to just without go to that without me. And hopefully we're waiting to hear back from our president, uh, who the uh, JPID has involved. And I'm not we haven't heard back from from him yet. Is is uh, but I I have to keep the meeting on the 11th as well. That uh, what Cindy just suggested, and and then they have an opportunity to meet on the on the 18th. Michael, did you say that that it's possible that this meeting, the CCWD meeting, could be moved to the to the morning, or the camera meeting would be moved to the morning of the 18th if both of them are if we can have both of them on the same day? I, I wouldn't dare to presume move the time of this board meeting, <laughs> uh, but we could we're ask. Through, we're through moving time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to wade back into that issue, but we could ask either board uh, if either board was willing. Uh, to reschedule because the camera meeting, I think the regularly scheduled camera meetings are at 2.30. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> oh, okay. So we have our, a, a, another potential conflict that morning. Who is that? IRWM. Mm, okay. So for the department heads that are here, any, any objections off the top of your heads to the, keeping it on the 11th? And so staff will accommodate that if we want to keep it on the 11th. And the other consideration I think that Director Radman raised yesterday was uh, potential, or was it President Underhill, sorry. Um, if we, because we typically also consolidate the December meetings um, for the holiday. And so just the, just the gap between the two meetings. Um, right, then but it's we'll not. Keep, mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we'll keep, try to keep the first meeting in December as well without rescheduling that one and if there obviously if there was anything that came up that needed board attention in the interim we could have a special mm -hmm. meeting yeah because moving at one time would have given us a five week <laughs> gap if or we, something yeah, yeah if we keep one on the yeah, 11th right. and then we move the one in december i think it would be five weeks mm -hmm. that's that's probably right, a little right. little much who knows what staff would get into in that period mm -hmm. of time so. or or the directors <laughs> or the directors <laughs> Okay, so it sounds like um, we'll keep the board meeting on the 11th, and in that case, we don't need any action on this agenda item. Um, we'll just keep it as it's regularly scheduled, and we'll um, anticipate canceling the second meeting in November, but we'll send out that notice. Okay. We don't have to have a motion for 3D? <clears throat> no, because we're not changing the regularly scheduled okay. meeting unless right. you want a motion. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, item number four, uh, new business, and I'm just very happy to present 4A, recognition of Bob Carter for his service with CCWD and Damon. Make sure I'm on. I'm on now, I believe. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's always bittersweet when you recognize the accomplishments of staff uh, upon their retirement. Um, I think Bob Carter uh, is especially so um, given the fact that he has really changed the way CCWD has operated out in the field in, in many ways significantly. I mean, he's been here for 25 years. And during that time, I think he's been able to challenge field staff and the district to do things creatively um, and internally, which as a result ends up saving the district and customers money. And so I think it's a testament to Bob um, that <clears throat> the district has been able to do some really um, unique things because I don't think without Bob's, um, uh, what's the right word? stick to itiveness and courage, really, and creativity, we couldn't have done a lot of what we've done over the years. Um, so I would love to read the resolution and then give everybody an opportunity to chime in on how awesome Bob is. Um, <clears throat> so here we are, resolution of the Board of Directors of the Calaveras County Water District. Recognizing and honoring Calaveras County Water District employee Robert Bob Carter. Whereas Robert Bob Carter has diligently served the Calaveras County Water District since May 8th, 1995, for a total of over 25 years. And whereas Bob began his career as the at the district as a mechanic and worked his way up the ranks to senior mechanic, 
And whereas during his tenure, Bob has been an integral part of the district's operations department, contributing to the daily field operations and to a number of critically important projects for the district, such as the new Vallecito wastewater treatment plant, the Copper Cove raw water pump station installation project, the Arnold wastewater treatment plant, <clears throat> excuse me, clarifier rehabilitation project, the Middle Fork pump station retrofit project, generator installations district wide, the Meadowmont pump station pump head replacement project, on highway and off highway vehicle emissions compliance, and the Ebbets Pass Reach 3A water transmission line project. And whereas, Bob has worked with a strong sense of dedication and responsibility to his position, staff, and the customers of the district. And whereas Bob is known to say that he has the best job in the world, he loves being a mechanic. Working on vehicles, especially military vehicles, is his passion. Bob has an equal number of photos of his Bronco and Shelby Cobra as he does of his lovely family. <laughs> and whereas Bob loves to begin any conversation about completing a complicated work effort with, the chances are slim to none and slims out of town, Bob. And whereas Bob will be remembered for encountering every single crazy driver on Sheep Ranch Road while commuting to the pass over many years. <laughs> now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the Calaveras County Water District hereby honor Bob Carter for his 25 years of service with the district. Be it further resolved that the Board of Directors and staff of the district, district wish Bob all the best in his retirement activities, which will include fixing up vehicles in his recently completed personal shop. So with I'll move, that. I'll move for acceptance. Second. All right. We have, to have, have anything to add? No, we, well, we have to have a vote, yes. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Yes. Director Ratterman? Yes. Director Thomas? Yes. President Underhill? Yes. Let her rip. <laughs> I'd just like to add on top of that, I, I wish I'd have more time to work with Bob kind of in the trenches, um, shoulder to shoulder. I, I, I know of Bob mostly by legend uh, through all the different great things that he's done for the district through, through staff that have been here for a long time. Uh, but I, I, I know well enough to know that um, he's just made really incalculable contributions to the district over the last 25 years. I think the list and that resolution is, are, those are just illustrative examples, um, but um, there's probably you know, a million other things that we could have included in that list. Um, and, and not just the, the contributions as a mechanic, but as a leader um, and, a, and, a, and somebody that has trained the people around him and, and with a positive attitude and, and really incredible dedication. So um, nothing but, but gratitude, Bob, and, and wish you all the best in retirement. And still got another week, so maybe I'll, I'll find a time to get out there with you still. There you go. Do you want to have it? You know, Bob, I didn't know you. I've been here, but I, I don't get to see uh, people like this very often, so I'm sorry I didn't get the opportunity. But um, it sounds like um, for 25 plus years, you're going to be still doing this, and I want you to enjoy your retirement. You learned it. Thank you very much. Well, I'd just like to say thank you as well. I mean, I, th I think, you know, we've had. Unfortunately, we've had so many people that are that are uh, retiring. I mean, it's a good thing for for them, and it's a good thing that they, you know, uh, can live within the county and get have a good job like the one that, uh, you know, you had. And I think you've added to the existing employees, some of the younger guys. You know, you set the bar very high for them, and and I really think that that's uh, uh, just a great testament to our to our advanced field staff guys and how we're bringing up these younger guys to that, that keep achieving. And uh, you were a great example. So thank you very much for your service here. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Bob, I'm kind of concerned that the last time that uh, we had a chance to talk, you said that, that you might be here for another couple of years. But uh, I, I, I think I'm, I'm going to quit talking to people that are, that are considering retirement. But maybe, I, maybe I, I said something that caused you to go early. But. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I wanted you to stick around long enough that we might be able to take advantage of the, the building that we hope to build over here beyond our, our shoulders here. But uh, 
Anyway, um, I didn't I didn't realize that you had a Shelby Cobra. I, I, I think that you probably will enjoy working on that quite a lot. So, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thanks for 25 years of uh, dedicated service. We really appreciate it. Scott, would you? Hey, also, Scott, uh, yeah, Bob. I also wanted to thank you for your for your service. And sorry I can't be there to, to see you see you off. But uh, good luck in, in retirement. And I've heard uh, heard your name several several times. All all in the good. And I'm certain that you set a good example for for all those that are in your in in your wake. And I uh, hope you have left uh, your institutional knowledge with a few of them. Thank you very much for your service. Okay, um, and sorry if. I get a little emotional because <laughs> Bob has more service than I do with CCWD, and I, not quite as much as Jeff, I don't think. But. No, he's, he's, he's got me. His. Oh, does he? Oh, okay. Yeah. And, my, and, and, I, and I'm still on the bubble right here and right now. So. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the jury's out on that. Yeah, the jury's out. <laughs> but Bob is truly, truly one of the special people with CCWD. And the reason I can say that is because Bob cares. And that is a true testament to his character and what he brought to CCWD. And I'm trying to calm down, but thank you, Bob. And uh, be in touch. Come see us with the new uh, building. You'll be around. I mean, you're here in the area. You're not going to leave Calaveras. No. So, Bob, thank you for everything you've done for us. Is there any other public comment, Bert? Uh, is there any? Yeah, here it comes. You know, for me, Bob, it's been a pleasure. It's been a privilege. Um, we've had some... I've seen you do some pretty crazy MacGyvering that has limped us along, but pretty good. Flying by the seam of our pants type situations. Uh, been a lot of laughs, some cries, and uh, definitely going to miss you, man. I appreciate everything you've done. Damon? With that, Bob, I just, <clears throat> you know, I, I said it at the beginning, I, I really want to thank you for everything you've done for the district and for being a great uh, employee, colleague, friend, um, and I want to present you with this. So, um, this is a copy of the resolution. Um, that was just what I want to See, when I go, I'm going to get one of those. It's just going to have a doorknob on it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let it hit you in the ass. <laughs> Did he care to say anything to us? Or? <laughs> It'll be big enough for a pan <laughs> 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 I came here when I was not too long out of the Navy. And this has been an exciting job. Had an opportunity to work on a variety of different equipment. You come to work every day, you never know what you're gonna be fixed on. Sometimes you've done the same job before, sometimes you've never even seen a piece of equipment. Hmm. But it's your job to figure out why it's not working and, and make it happen. It's never boring. This has been a great place to work. I don't have any complaints. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> okay. And if I have no other comments, we'll go on to um, 4B. Discussion direction regarding engaging with Urban Futures Incorporated, UFI for Financial Advisory Services. Rebecca. Hi. Uh, so this is an item that I've uh, talked about uh, at length with uh, the general manager. I've brought it up at the Finance Committee. I've 
I've talked a little bit about it towards the board that we just have a gap between the list of infrastructure projects that we have in the available resources of funding that we have. And so trying to identify what's a creative way that we can continue to make sure that we stay on top of those very large capital improvement projects while mitigating, you know, rate increases and borrowing costs and trying to stay in the vein of pay as we go as much as we can um, and uh, making sure that we're leveraging on grants everywhere that we possibly can. Even with that, there still is clearly a gap. So what this is, is basically bringing someone in to help us prepare and model a long-term funding structure for our CIP plan. Um, it's taking into consideration grant funding, our current revenue sources based on the current rate study. It's looking at um, long-term borrowing, short-term borrowing, and trying to make sure that we can um, marry the plan with funding and make sure that we aren't sitting here looking at a, a piece of our infrastructure that needs to be replaced immediately and we don't have the available resources to do it. So we're trying to figure out a plan, short term and long term, so that we can do the most cost effective method for the district and the ratepayers in terms of paying for these projects. Um, it's not um, it's it's not something that was contemplated in the budget. Uh, however, we do have uh, sources of expenditures within the current budget that we're seeing savings in that we would be able to utilize the funds there in order to contract with UFI, which is Urban Futures Inc. Um, they have a strong background in working with uh, water purveyors, uh, water and sanitary districts. Uh, we did an RFP, we had six respondents, all varying um, levels of experience um, when it came to water and sewer. And we thought that that was really important. We had some respondents that were heavy in schools. Uh, we had some respondents that were really heavy in counties and cities. Um, and then we had some respondents that were really heavy in water and sewer agencies. And we felt that that was important because they have a strong understanding of where our, our funding sources are, grants that are available to us that wouldn't be available to any other you know, school or county or city. And they have a, a good track record in terms of helping their clients come up with these plans. In addition to just having a plan, it's, they're also building a model that we can then internally use and model based on new CIP projects that are coming up or a new grant that we find out about that might be able to offset some of these costs. We took this to the Finance Committee on, um, what was the date of that one? September 22nd. Uh, and even though the contract is within the mm -hmm the <coughs> purchasing authority and the contracting authority of the general manager myself. It, uh, we felt that it was important to bring it to the finance committee because this is a new kind of um, concept for us. And uh, then it was also determined it's a good idea to bring it forward to the board so you also know what, it, what exactly this means and what we're looking at. Uh, so that's what this is. Uh, we don't, don't find that there is any need for a, um, a uh, budget adjustment for the board to approve, but we did want to bring it forward to have this discussion with the board um, and what the benefits of entering into this contract would be. At the um, finance meeting, I thought that this is a, a Project and needed um, consultant to hire, if you want to call it that. And uh, so I support the decision to move forward and, and put this together. That long term plan is important, especially with the first licensing coming up and, of course, the project and everything. So I think this is something that we need to 
And as the other member of the Finance Committee, I uh, agree with Cindy that this was the direction to go. And one of the things that I did talk to Rebecca about was the fact that, you know, urban futures will be guiding us and they will be on prem if needed mm -hmm. at any, at the drop of a hat, and which is very, very important that they remain yes engaged and, yeah and i think you know sometimes uh when i've looked at large financings that i've been involved in they get complicated and mm -hmm. the terms get complicated and trying to explain the benefits of borrowing gets complicated and um what urban futures um, and, and a lot of munic municipal financial advisors um, offer is the ability to translate it better than I can. And they have a strong understanding of the municipal market. That's what they do every day, all day long. They know when it's not the right time to borrow and they know when it is the right time to borrow. So they can offer us those insights, um, short of me having to sit here and try to call around and shop for rates. Um, call around and try to determine, you know, is this the right time or is it not the right time? So they offer the ability to help present this information to the public and to the board. They help, um, they, they give us the ability to better present this information internally and make sure that we're making the right decisions for us. And they don't have any skin in the game. They're not making money off of us doing any sort of borrowing, but they're here to help us identify when it is the right timing or what's the right structure or what we need to go forward with when we identify a project that we do need to start moving on. Just a few. So how would you fit that in? <laughs> yeah. And for something like that, it takes somebody that doesn't want to You, you've mentioned that this doesn't require a, the board approval any, of any budget uh, expansion, uh, but how do you want to handle this? You you want a motion to accept? No, this is just an informational item. As as Rebecca mentioned, this is a uh, that doesn't require board approval, but because it's a pretty significant departure from the way we've managed things in the past. We wanted to make sure the board was informed. What we anticipate coming out of this is a report or a plan that will provide us with their recommendations as to a long-term financing plan to, to bridge the gap between um, projects that we've identified that, that need to be um, completed and what we have the ability to pay for on our own. Um, so that's something we've been contemplating for quite some time. Um, and in, in going back to preparation of the CIP uh, over the last couple of years, making sure that we're identifying all projects that are needed, not just ones that we think we can afford, because um, that shouldn't be the, the analysis at that level. Um, and so by identifying the, the critical infrastructure that we need to address, um, it, it poses the problem of, okay, how are we gonna pay for it? Um, borrowing of money, uh, and I'm sure that they're going to be, have their fingers on interest rates at all time, because interest rates right now are just so volatile that it's, you know, it would behoove them and behoove us to really pay attention to that. Yes, yes. Yeah, and as Rebecca mentioned too, the, the, they, um, one of the things I think we both liked about this proposal was they, are, they had a, an open mind to other sources of funding, so we're not going into it with any assumptions of taking out uh, massive debt. We're going to continue to pursue any grant opportunities that we can find, any other sources of funding that we can bring in, and debt would be the last, the last option but having an understanding of what that option is as well. And the, I just mentioned really quickly, one of the other things I liked about them is the team is made up of both finance experts that, that, that focus on the markets, but also uh, former finance directors from public agencies that have been in our seats before um, and understand 
really how how districts work, and I think that combination was really appealing as well. So, uh, how how often are we going to get status reports, or how's it going to work? Is it going to? I mean, we're going to have our uh, capital improvement update. They're going to take that update and review. Is this going to be an annual? I mean, how often are we going to see uh, a work product from them? Um, so the, this particular contract is to actually build the model and do that initial long-term plan. So okay. That's so this is just establishing. This is establishing okay. that. And then it gives us the ability to utilize that model, but also we can work with them if we need to change anything about that model or we need to modify you know, some assumptions that need to occur on our end. Um, they, what I also liked about them is some of the respondents were like, you know, we looked at your CIP plan, you know, they pull it online, they can see what, where we're at, and they go, oh, you guys need to immediately go out and borrow a bunch of money. And we know we can't do that, and we know it's not gonna be beneficial to do that because we're not in a place that we can just turn around and start doing you know, $50 million worth of projects tomorrow. What UFI you know, recognized is we are, we are a small agency. We're not this enormous you know, organization, so we have internal bandwidth issues. And so it was important for them to understand that those internal bandwidth issues uh, should not force us to under or overestimate what we can do and to make sure that the funding outlay plan marries well with our ability internally. So we're not borrowing when we don't need to and we're not borrowing at the wrong time. So um, I would say we will be able to use this model and this plan in order to better communicate the funding scenarios for the CIP plan. So when we do that on an annual basis for the CIP, CIP plan overall, it is going to be married to the information that gets generated from this product. Right, well, I mean, the thing about our CIP pro program, and you know, a lot of times you know, a grant will change our priorities mm -hmm. or, or uh, uh, a compliance issue will change our priorities. Yes. So it just has to be a pretty liquid uh, relationship. They have yeah. to understand that you know, when op different opportunities come, we may have to switch our priorities fairly quickly. Correct. You know, certainly, if we're going to make a commitment ever to borrow to build some of these things, th th we, we better make sure that we have the capability to accomplish that. Yep. Right, after, right off the bat, yes. but I just, I just hope that everyone recognizes that over the years, you know, it, 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 you can plan all you want, but you know, the state could change things, opportunity could change things, you know. Hopefully, after the election, you know, people will start talking about the infrastructure. Uh, federally, the infrastructure program may uh, get rolling, and hopefully, that'll be helpful. But you know, I, I certainly uh, support this. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're, what the. Uh, Product looks like and uh, whatever help you guys. Uh, I know you guys need the help, so I certainly will support it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, oh. I would like to get a copy of the proposal if I could. Oh, sure. I kind of view this book and see the but I kind of look at this as a um, something to help us keep an eye on the ball. Um, 10, 15 years down the road, we know the first license, in my opinion, that's like a number one that we can't lose sight of. And I would, and maybe we do this, but I think that FERC should be on that CIP plan. You know what I mean? So we, wow. we don't lose sight of that. And I would like that this company would know that, you know, that would be part of our investment, which I think I said it is, you know, investment schedule. But how do we invest? How do we prepare for that huge ticket item? And the other CIP plan that we that. But if I need a copy of that, I'm curious. Um, Scott, care to comment on anything? Quiet, he's putting right now. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> Did you say no thank you? <laughs> I said no thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. I think it's a good idea. I'm, in favor. I'm definitely in favor, in favor of it. I have nothing for to add at this point. I think it's a great idea. Okay. Okay, so we'll move forward. We'll bring back um, uh, updates and, and the final report when that's ready and um, keep the board informed. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm.
Item 4C, discussion action to authorize subleasing warehouse space from Habitat for Humanity. Good afternoon again, everybody. So uh, when the district was first approached by the leaseholder uh, uh, about whether or not we would be interested in, in leasing, taking over the lease for the warehouse next door to our mechanic shop off Pool Station Road, I think at first impulse, it was to just say, no, we're not interested. Uh, that was my first impulse. Michael and I have discussed this at length. I think it was both of our first impulse. But as we start to consider some of the benefits associated with having a warehouse uh, now that we are, we are leasing for a short period of time or a somewhat short period of time, there's a lot of advantages it provides to the district uh, currently. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Namely, um, a central warehouse provides us the opportunity to receive large bulk orders at one site and that we can then break down and deposit or give out to our different uh, regional warehouses, which saves costs on shipping and allows us to leverage cheaper prices for bulk items. Um, it allows uh, for the district's purchasing agent to really monitor inventory. Uh, it can come into a central warehouse and then once it's checked out, we can have a system, <clears throat> excuse me, for checking out items that he can then see real time uh, rather than right now the current uh, uh, work effort is that we have regional warehouses all over the district and in order to try to optimize pricing we can get it, we can get a, a bulk delivery delivered to one warehouse and then we can have staff or the purchasing agent himself can try to break all that, uh, break that order down and have it delivered to its different regional warehouses, that's, it's, it's just a lot of work. It's cumbersome. This provides staff the opportunity to come into the administrative building, stop by the shop, stop by the warehouse, pick up in inventory, um, and make appointments with the mechanics, talk to the purchasing, purchasing agent about necessary items. And uh, it, it provides uh, a streamlined approach to shipping and receiving for the district. Um, one of the really important opportunities that it also provides is it allows us to, to have a, a, a test run, if you will, on what it would look like to op operate a warehouse uh, for the district without actually constructing the warehouse first. We can, we can look at this building and we can understand what works and what doesn't work from a purchasing perspective, from a storage perspective, um, how, we, how we ultimately want to see the relationship between a mechanic shop and a warehouse um, uh, be developed as we will look to construct a shop next door to the administrative building here. Um, there are some potential financial impacts. We would be taking over a, a lease. We would be subleasing this, this warehouse. Um, uh, it looks like if we were to pick it up in November moving forward, it would be about a $22,000 um, cost. Uh, we do have money. Uh, that's in our uh, budget now for building repairs that we could look to use. However, we must be mindful also that we're going to ultimately have to make building repairs as well. Uh, we have a lot of buildings throughout the, the utility. So um, I think we should just be prepared to have to spend some money in order to work to, um, to sublease this warehouse. But I do feel it provides benefit to the district in many ways. And it's a good opportunity for us to really drill in on what it, what it is we want to see out of a warehouse long term. Cindy. So, um, can you give me an update as to where we are in developing this property? What's happening with that kind of thing? Well, yeah, why, why don't we first finish <coughs> what we're doing here? Would that well, this is, they're, they're related, and um, I can, related. so I can do that. I think it's relevant. Um, I can answer that question real quick if you'd like first, because it is they're definitely related issues. Uh, where we left off here, you know, we put this out to bid, um, and the bids we got back were much higher than what we wanted. We, um, in working with the engineering committee, thought that we could go back, scale down the design a little bit, do a lot of the work ourselves. Um, and, and deliver at least the mechanic shop initially, also you know, phase it in, uh, deliver at least the mechanic shop initially at a much lower price than what the bids came back at. Um, and we still wanna do that. Uh, we've 
been the, one of the other justifications for delaying that though was just the revenue uncertainty caused by COVID. So we kind of put that on hold for a little while. Um, we're also still just in the peak construction season. So our engineering department hasn't had the bandwidth to revisit that. But once I think we wrap up um, the construction projects that we have underway right now, we'll have some time to go back and, and start to develop that project again. We're not, we've, we committed to the board. We're not spending any money on that until we come back to the board with a, with a plan um, and, for, and, and for approval. So that's where we left off at though, was that we would just do a mechanic shop initially, then uh, move forward with a warehouse, but that we phase those things out and we do it in a more cost-effective way than what the bid came back at. And what, just to touch on something that Damon mentioned really, really quickly here is, um, I think what, what was really attractive about this option to me was the opportunity for us to figure out how, you know, first of all, whether a centralized warehouse is really the best option for the district or not. And, and if so, um, how to best optimize it, how to design it so that it meets our needs. Um, and so I kind of look at it as a pilot project for answering that initial question because <clears throat> I'd hate to build it and then realize, you know what, the, the district needs distributed warehouses anyways and we didn't need to build this thing. So we can answer that question now by taking over this space as sort of a pilot project, figure out if this is really the best way to, to do it, and then um, optimize the warehouse itself before we spend a dime on construction up here. So I think some of you are aware that I was really um, for the idea of building the warehouse so um, I felt that you didn't have everything dialed in. You created a position for somebody to do this central warehouse person. And now I just heard you say, well, we still have to figure out what's the right thing to do. Maybe we still need more you know, distribution centers. And when I saw this, my first reaction is, I don't think we should. However, if you can prove to me the benefit of spending, you know, $33,600 when maybe that money should be going towards the place next door, you know, where we want to build. Um, it, can you negotiate with the price instead of just taking all the what they pay, instead of them defaulting and getting out the lease and having the um, property owner be in a position of a table and they're going to go after these people for it, but what's the reality of that? Can you negotiate it a lot less? And um, with the new position that was created, can you explain to me um, how you're doing it right now? You're ordering supplies? Is it is there have we seen any kind of benefit yet? Is it still in the development stage? Yeah, so just to just so we to clarify that, the new position, the purchasing agent position wasn't at all predicated on the warehouse. We knew there was going right. to be a big delay between creating that position and if or, you know, we didn't even, we just still don't know if we're ever going to have a warehouse. Um, the, the benefits of having the purchasing agent, though, we felt like would be immediate without, even without a warehouse. Um, so that, that, I think, is, is where, we, where we stand on that position. The, and then as far as negotiating, they're not in a position of default. Um, so the option that they are facing is whether or not they keep their store open or not. And they have, um, I think pretty, my understanding is, uh, you know, they kind of break even maybe a little bit more. They're not, they're not bringing in a lot of revenue. Um, and they've been closed for a while because of COVID, I think initially and some staff turnover. Um, but the, the, the decision point they're at right now, which is why this is, um, we actually have to make a decision on this today, um, is whether or not they reopen the store. So it's not a matter of default. If, they, if, if CCWD declines, uh, they're gonna reopen the store and they're gonna, they're gonna serve out their lease. Um, so we're not in a position to negotiate that, I don't think. They wouldn't take a lower amount than what is due to the landlord. And then just to add to the second part of your question, um, and we do have Mike, our purchasing agent here. 
Um, but I, I, we haven't we haven't presented to the board yet the, the tangible savings associated with his position. Um, we're working on that, um, and we look to provide that to you here in the near future. But yes, um, I can say that you know having somebody who who is able to take the time. Um, uh, research pricing, research availability, um, have vendors kind of compete for the, for the services or for the, the money from CCWD has been a direct benefit. And also having, having somebody that can take the time out to um, analyze whether or not X is the best solution for the problem, maybe it's Y, uh, and then provide insight to our field staff while they're working out in the field to resolve other issues has been a, a direct benefit also. Does um, <clears throat> this position also look at, um, I noticed yeah, for auto parts, there's mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff, so is that going to be kept separate or will this position be overseen and talk to those parts for the best prices? I mean, you know, we're buying it from trees, we're right. buying it from centers, and the auto stuff, so I'm wondering, would that add value to have this position look at that? Or are you planning on doing that all? So, so yes and yes. So with the position as it currently is, Mike and I have conversations all the time about purchased automotive equipment or, or parts or replacement um, widgets. And we also, and he also manages the fleet and works with Enterprise to uh, make sure that, you know, if we requested a vehicle for lease, when is it gonna be delivered? Does it have the correct aftermarket parts associated with the job? Um, what are we going to do with the w w as we surplus the other vehicles? Um, and then, to your point of, or to your question about the the parts for the mechanic shop, having the warehouse where the purchasing agent's office is next door to the mechanic shop really improves our ability to understand what we're going to need, what we can keep in the warehouse for the mechanics to use. They also keep repair or repair parts on on hand at the shop as well, but this will help improve that. Um, that has been one of those moving targets, tough items to really work to resolve our automotive repair parts associated with district fleet. It's, it's been a, it's, it's a tough one and it's one we continue to work on. I'm interested in whether or not, okay, we're going to be getting all of these supplies to the warehouse. Are we going to be having a system of delivery or does it always mean that the field the however many shops come in or are we going to expand so, it so we we do that now uh kind of in a regional format so we all we already leverage folks's uh travel plans folks travel plans on on whether or not we can have material or equipment delivered to certain sites Mm -hmm. This will uh, uh, this will improve, and it will also provide us a one-stop shop, so to speak. Right. Mm -hmm. For hey, if if we don't have anybody going to Copper this afternoon, um, perhaps you just might need to come down to the warehouse and grab it. You haven't checked your mailbox at the admin administrative building in quite a while, so go ahead and knock that out as well. So so it gives us another uh, another option. Um, we do that now. So oftentimes, um, you know, I might have repair parts in the back of of the vehicle that I drive and I'm headed to Ebbets Pass one day or, um, you know, there's, there's a, any number of ways we can go ha about having parts delivered, but it will allow us to inventory those into the central warehouse and then check those out of the central warehouse. So once they, once they head to copper, they're, they're considered at copper, they're, they're gone. And that's going to obviously happen over time. It's not like we get a bunch of inventory and then we push it out and, and we imagine that it, it's been put into the ground or put on a vehicle or put into a water plant, but it, it will be accounted for at that facility. Okay. Um, Michael, when you and I talked about this initially, um, the size of this unit was represented as being twice as large as, as we currently have. Did you find out that that is approximately right? It's, I think it's a, the exact same size as the building we have right now. Exactly the same yeah. size? Yeah. Okay. 50, doesn't say 5760? Yeah, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but it's, it's got, in Stanford. It's got another 3,000 square foot in mezzanines, is that? Right. Right. Okay, so at $2,800 a month, that's approximately what we pay for. We pay 3,000 a month for we the We pay a little bit more, facility. yeah, they, yeah. they, they yeah. must be better negotiators. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
so I, I don't, I think that there, there's a couple hundred dollars a month. It, it could, you could make a case for the fact that we're taking over an existing lease. If we let that that lease, if we don't take advantage of subleasing, we'd probably would the the owner would or the owner of the warehouse would want three thousand a month um, instead of twenty eight. I I kind of like the idea of being able to test drive a warehouse before you actually mm -hmm. buy one. So mm -hmm. that that's what I'm I'm interested in, and in talking with um, um, Bob Carter. Um, and some of the other mechanics down there, they, they, they kind of lamented the fact that there's no, uh, currently they don't, they don't have a place to, to uh, store a vehicle that is kind of partially in, in the process of being repaired. And I, I've never heard any reports about vandalism, but I, su I would suspect that, you know, if you have a utility truck down there with the utility boxes and stuff on them, it would be a very tempting thing if it's left outside. So. Uh, I, I'm very much in, in favor of this. I, I think it's, uh, it, it, it's you know, I, I particularly like that test driving aspect of it. So anyway, that's my thought. So I, I have a couple thoughts. Uh, um, I, I'm in favor of, of, uh, of taking over this lease for the, for the period of time. Uh, you know, it, at the 5,760, it ends up being a little less than 50 cents a square foot, which is, I believe, below, below market. Uh, but, but I want to remind everybody, I, I mean, I'm, I'm still convinced that if we manage our own project and, and there's nothing simpler than metal buildings, mm -hmm. otherwise I wouldn't be able to do it every day. But <laughs> I, I'm just, I mean, we can build our own, you know, there's four components. It's a building package, it's a foundation, it's erection, and then our, our uh, site work. Uh, we can do that. And I think we can do it for, you know, $400,000 perhaps. Uh, the the big issue I have with this is I, I, I don't want this to become home. I mean, we can we could we were just talking about financing. We could finance a project, a, a four or five hundred thousand dollar project, and pay less in rent if we if we financed it. Particularly now, I mean, Rebecca, I mean, how much would a five hundred thousand uh, dollar loan cost us right now? I mean, I, I believe it's less than this rent. Um, but again, we. It will take us probably 18 months to get that thing, you know, squared away. If if we can determine that we uh, that we're going to have the income after the COVID uh, problems, I mean, I'm I'm kind of uh, uh, hoping to get an update on our finances here soon. Uh, but I just wanted everyone to understand we could, you know, we could build this and finance it ourselves and pay back, kind of like what we did with this yeah, thing. Yeah, I was going to say, did this yeah, building? Yeah, you know, yeah. at two or three percent and we can do it for less than we're going to be paying this rent so i just want everyone to keep that in mind yeah the, the point is well taken that, that the, this is not we're not going into this with the idea of it being permanent in fact we've discussed any any improvements that we do would are going to have to be modular and portable so that we'll after the end of two years be able to relocate them up to um, you know, to our facility that we would plan on constructing between now and then. The timing actually, I think, works out pretty well because our hope was that we would start w construction here on a mechanic shop actually sooner than that, but that would be the first phase of it. Um, All right. Well, I, what I would hope for this is, it, is, is a deadline, is a deadline to get this thing accomplished. I would like to have the two work together, work mm -hmm. on the same schedule where we, we expect to be over there when this lease is up. Right. That's what I would. I, I think that gives. I think the timing is is pretty good. You know, maybe we could even get it done faster than what is remaining on this lease. Um, but I don't think we should go beyond that. Well, and we also recognize that we're still we, we still don't know exactly how our budget's going to come out. And, right. But right. that being said, I mean that would that's what I would hope we would have staff to have in their head is that we're going to be over there uh, by the time that this lease is up. That's yeah. That that is absolutely the goal. I got a couple things that it's okay. This is a good time. Scott, um, can I say one thing? I, I do, Scott, like, Scott, one second. Ahead. Just one second. I just want to clarify. So you're saying that have the property next door completed in two and a half years or have a plan to complete. start it? Complete. No, complete. Complete. Yeah. yeah. It's a six-month project. It's not even a six-month project. That building could be done in six weeks 
from from foundation to final erection. It's it's just a matter of what we want to do to the outside, how how far we want to take the paving and all that kind of stuff. Well, again, I think I think what Michael was just saying, and Damon, you know, is currently our, we're we're busy on the construction projects mm -hmm. out there in the infrastructure, and so our staff really doesn't have the time to to vote over here at, at least until probably winter, and then we, maybe we can start to ramp it back up, come up with a new plan. Again, it can be an expandable building where we build a portion of it now. We can expand later. It's a very simple thing to do, um, you know, and I I think that. Uh, it, it, there's just uncertainty as to whether or not, you know, in the long term, and and also the the, you know, I, I assume that that's part of our CIP is that over there, and and we need to find out where is that money going to come from, right. you know, do we have enough of it, you know, so you know those those sort of things we just need to get our ducks in a row, and this is a not a bad interim site, you know, uh, but but I'm convinced we can get over there quickly and responsibly. It's month to month. Oh. So if we build, so, and I, I, my, my thinking is we would proceed with the mechanic. I know there's benefits to having the two of them side by side down there, um, but I don't see ne this necessarily causing us to delay right. moving forward with the mechanic shop up here. Um, we still want to do that as soon as possible. It's the second phase of that, the warehouse, that would probably be 18 months, two years out anyways. Uh, I, I think we'll. I think it's a balance. We can get out of the mechanic shop anytime we want, and we still have the warehouse section. I, I think, and I've kind of always said this. I, I really wanted us to get to get the basics of what we needed over there because the expansion is so easy. And so, uh, you know, I think that we're on the right path here. Um, it, 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 I, I really just think that this is the right thing to do. But I agree with you that we need to be focused on at least, you know, phase one would be the mechanics. Because we can get out of that anytime, and then we'll see how uh, you know the finances end up and how we can pay for this. And and I need to get our our field or our engineering staff squared away with how simple this is. This is very very simple stuff to build that building. It's very simple, and we can do it. So, Are you still there, Scott? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I do like Russ's idea about test driving and see if this see if this works out. Um, you know, having a warehouse, especially next door mechanic building, very similar what we talked about. I think what we already talked about next door is a done deal, and we should move ahead with it in that time schedule of getting it done within two and a half years. I think is a is a great goal, and we should should strive for that and and make sure we're not making these two rental payments a permanent part of our uh, of our expenditure, especially that we've already. Um, approved or approved to move forward on, on the building next door. Um, what I'd like to see and would have liked to see in this in this presentation is that 33,000. Uh, oh, and the other thing I'd like is, is any improvements we make to this building, we're making sure that we can move those improvements like the pallet racking, computer system, and any shelving that we put in this building that would make sure that, that they know, um, the owners of the building know that that stuff is coming coming with us. Yep. And, and I'm assuming that we already did that with our uh, the truck racks and, and stuff that's in the mechanic mechanic shop. But those same uh, racks that they lifts or whatever you want to call them are coming are coming to the new shop with us. That's correct. Um, and the timing at two and a half years, I think it, it sounds like six weeks, six months, whatever. Uh, but what I what I really didn't see at this presentation is what is, is the cost over there is thirty three thousand six hundred. What is the value? Over there, what, are, are we saving at least thirty-three thousand six hundred in in bulk purchasing? Are, are, are we are we getting close to that? I mean, where, where are we in two thousand, thirty thousand, fifty thousand? You know, where whereabouts is that is that number? And how do we and how do we calculate? That's the one thing that's missing from this whole thing is this is what we're spending by spending this amount of money. We're not really not gaining a whole a whole lot besides a peak at our future is what we're what we're planning. But what does it what does it cost? What is it? What are we saving? And, and by by creating this position, which sounds like a fantastic idea, and and 
we're doing we're saving we're saving some on on transportation costs we're saving a lot on purchasing costs we're saving on on just having uh, a centralized uh, facility with with um, everything coming here where, where the management staff is but we got we got to be able to put a number on that at some point that's what I, that's what we're not seeing yet and i'm not, not quite sure how far away we are from that so that's a great question and it's a great point one of the reasons why you're not seeing that number in there um is this all came to us very last minute and like i said they have they're making a decision tomorrow as to whether or not to reopen the store or not um so this was kind of a we didn't want to or at least i didn't want to and i don't know if, if you guys have having an idea i'm just very reluctant to put numbers out on the savings side um, that we haven't really had time to drill into because um, I don't want to create expectations that we don't aren't, aren't able to meet um, so I don't know that we've had enough time to really dive into that and, and answer that question so I think that's why we want to make sure the costs are laid out and that the board's fully aware of what the costs would be and and we hope to achieve savings by it we know that there is value in in giving us an opportunity to work with a warehouse um, but we also hope to to achieve savings as well we just aren't haven't really had time to drill into that and identify what those numbers are So you're not in favor. I am. You're not in favor. I think the money would be better spent moving forward and starting that project in January and finishing it up in six months, starting with Fairbone, but enough to get over there. I, I think it's just a waste of time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank One of the things we're, we're talking about is the fact that we're going to be doing it ourselves, right? Okay, our engineering department, what kind of position are they now to just drop everything and proceed with the building? Well, they wouldn't, they wouldn't drop everything because, you know, as far as priorities go, you know, our infrastructure is, is, the, is a higher priority, always will be. Um, this is, that's why this hasn't, we haven't touched this mm -hmm. since the last discussion we had with the board during the budget process. Um, and we weren't planning on picking it back up until either very late this calendar year or early next year um, when, when we have time to focus on this issue again and when we have a better picture, revenue picture. Um, so we would, but we are definitely plan. That's still the plan. At that time, we would pick it up and um, and pursue that project in in a in a more cost effective How manner. Three thousand. So I would be in favor of that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 The, no, the two, right next door to each other. But well, they're well, identical. Okay. Yeah. okay, so what I'm saying is you're going to add another $2,800 a month, which I think we spend too much money too easily here. And if you stop the mechanic shop, like got out of that month to month and move them over to the other spot to try out the central thing, what I'm saying is I just don't think we should be spending the money. I, the mechanic <clears> could be moved over there. And you say for three thousand, then I think that's fine. The, the mechanic uh, shop is 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 fully occupied. It's, yeah, it's, there's, there's no storage space. Right. So, so I think one of the one of the points to make, and and Michael hit hit the nail on the head when he said we just this has been a fast moving, this is a fast moving mm -hmm. decision for the board to have to make. One of the things that is clear from having a purchase a, purchasing agent <clears throat> now is that we're able to to realize cheaper pricing for repair pump, or repair items on say pumps motors replacement items through that purchasing agent now we just haven't been able to quantify that for you um the, the and and, it, and michael's absolutely correct in in 
being reluctant to say across the board that savings month to month are going to achieve what the least cost is associated with a warehouse because any number of things could happen. However, that is the approach that I think the central warehouse really provides us with that the regionalization that we have right now currently does not, is it, is it allows us to kind of focus everything into one site that makes it much more, uh, much easier to understand in a lot of ways um, the financial aspects, whether how much it is we're spending, are we overspending on items, are we, are we right on the mark? Um, what is the, you know, if we have to buy the more expensive item, what's the justification? And it takes a lot of the, the fact that our purchasing agent now spends a lot of time on the road from site to site to site. Um, it takes that out of the equation. It puts a little bit more of that now on the field staff and it allows the, the purchasing side of the house to kind of uh, be able to put a spotlight on those numbers a little bit more tangibly. Yeah, I, I get you. But, you know, like Mike said, we don't know who's still going to be doing the delivery, right? So, if it goes from the purchasing agent delivering now to field staff, they get paid to do the extra cost. I just, um, you know, we're going to spend 85000 give or take on lease to determine how much we're going to save or what we can do differently. And I just, I just would love to see us maybe not spending that money so easily. Could you possibly, we meet again in a couple of weeks, could I, th I think those are all good points. These are, I mean, I think they're all good points. And this is, we've, we've wrestled with this too. As Damon said, we were both kind of skeptical about this to begin with. We came around because of the opportunity that it provides. But those are all, I think, very good points. I, I, I will say, I don't, we're not going to delay on moving forward here. Like I said, um, I, I, I still think that that's something we want to get done. Um, according to the, what we had laid out before, and that's achievable. Um, but I think, but I, th you know, I think there's there's pros and cons here, and it is it does put the board in a tough spot to have to make a decision on this shorter notice. Do we I just, have other thoughts? Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to um, make a kind of a rebuttal to what you said about you know, why don't we just immediately move the mechanic shop next door so we don't have that payment? It, it would it, you know put a number on on the the relocation cost. I mean, you got two hoists, uh, got office set up over there, and I, I can see it taking. Uh, I don't know, a week or two to, to make that transition, and in the meantime, you, you don't have any place to work on the trucks. So I, I, I think the mechanic shop particularly should stay where it is until it, until well, it is time to make it. Okay, yeah. you want to give up one monthly fee for a month? Okay, move it over there. That, that's what I was saying. Um, I was just trying to make a point if you gave up one of those costs. Can I make a motion? Mm -hmm. Uh, I make a motion by minute entry to authorize general manager to enter into a sublease with Habitat for Humanity warehouse for warehouse space at 74, 740 Pool Station Road in San Andreas. Second. Any other comments? Public? Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Director Adams? Yes. And President Adams? Yes. Thank you all. Okay, thank you. Um, do we want to take a five minute break before we get into Brad? I, I, I'm fine with that. Uh, yeah, uh, that's good. Five minutes. Oh, dear.
Nothing personal, Brad. No, no that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, and good afternoon, directors. Uh, what I'm going to be presenting here is a detailed proposal, which is attached to this agenda item, uh, that was passed through the Legislative Affairs Committee and brought to the board here for consideration to move this and send it to the Bureau of Reclamation to try and procure a permanent storage share in New Malone's Reservoir. What we'd be asking for is essentially 13,800 acre feet of permanent storage in New Malone's that would be beneficial to Calaveras County Water District that would allow us to use our post-1914 North Fork Stanislaw water rights uh, to store in this portion of New Malonis Reservoir. Now, the, this is, comes through the WIN Act guidelines, uh, section 4006 to be exact, that directs the Bureau of Reclamation to work with agencies in the Stanislaw watershed to determine if there will be storage made available under revised operations plans of the large New Malonis Reservoir. And under those guidelines, we've taken a conserved water approach, which is to say that we need to look at ways to make quote unquote new water available as to not to impact downstream users or those reliant on the Stanislaw River. And so we believe that the strongest argument is a conserved water approach. In other words, the water that we haven't been using since the baseline we used 2013, uh, consistent with state guidelines. Looking over time in Ebbets Pass and the Copper Cove service areas, how our gallons per capita daily has decreased over time through our water treatment plants. And that analysis is provided in detail in this proposal for Reclamation's approval. Looking at the amount of water made available from this GPCD analysis, as it were, we look at about a 10 year amount of storage that would help us to deal with long term demand increases in the Copperopolis, Copper Cove areas that we're expecting, as well as along the Highway 4 corridor, even as far as Arnold Dorrington going up through the Ebbets Pass service area. It would help us with drought water supply planning. There's a lot of uncertainty as we move forward with, in terms of water supply availability. And so we want to build that resiliency and storage in county for in county beneficial uses, having that water available in New Malonis. And through different operational uh, conditions and, and uh, potentials, we might even be able to use this water in Ebbets Pass area as well as in the Copper Cove area downstream through exchanges of the Bureau of Supply in the reservoir, essentially using upstream in lieu of water that would be in the reservoir used downstream for their uses. Again, these have yet to be determined, but these are the types of operational conditions we're looking at to really build that resiliency for the district. Now, the GPCD analysis that's provided in the attached proposal looks at a population range, essentially admitting that there is uncertainty inherent in the population that we see, especially in Ebbets Pass, owing to part-time versus full-time residences, time of year, other considerations that way. Uh, similar things in the Lake Tulloch area as well. And so looking at this range, we decided to use a midpoint approach to try and uh, dive down into what we could be certain about looking long term for conserved water, again using a baseline estimate, that we could then make that water available for storage in New Malonis. The proposal that's attached here would go to the Bureau of Reclamation. It was requested uh, by their staff in their uh, Central California area office following a July 24th meeting that we had with them. Uh, and just so the board's aware, there would be no cost to submit this proposal, but we should expect around 10 to 15,000 just from additional follow-up, perhaps more data, requests, information that need to be sent to them. And that's primarily for legal review, hydrologic review, and other things that uh, would support staff's analysis in putting this together and responding. Uh, but that, that being said, that's just part one of what is gonna be a very long process to actually ever obtain that 13,800 in New Malonis. Uh, as detailed in the memo here, there's a number of parallel processes after. Uh, we even get information back from Reclamation on this proposal itself, including the feedback and you know going through that process with them. Uh, and that would involve things like State Water Resources Control Board water rights petitions and changes, as well as establishing a Warren Act agreement with the Bureau of Reclamation detailing things like I mentioned earlier, these operational conditions and considerations. Uh, we don't really know what that looks like because a lot of these haven't been done in the past, but we suspect based on other non-CVP storage approvals and processes of reclamation, this could be on the two to three year timeline without litigation, which of course there are litigation, CEQA, NEPA risks in all of these steps. So 
I can lay out and go through each of the details in the proposal here, but really uh, there's a lot of information that's fairly dense, but we wanted to give Reclamation a chance to look at and, and consider our th request for 13,800 acre feet of permanent storage for CCWD's benefit in New Moulinus. It's a good question, and, and this follows obviously years of back and forth with reclamation and discussion on, on how the district would try and procure storage in New Malonis. So these concepts, uh, the, the Bureau is well aware of, even at their management and region office level. They know that we've been interested in this. And this details a lot of background information, a lot of detailed data analysis work, a lot of pulling that information together that folks here at the district and elsewhere have done. Uh, to answer your question about the Bureau's review, we don't exactly know what their feedback would be that, but we know that A, they're expecting a proposal from us. They asked it from us in the July meeting. Uh, we then detail each of the steps in that proposal based on what they outlined to Michael, myself, and others. So we're at least giving them what they've asked from us. And as far as their response, they might ask us to dive into additional details in the conserved water estimate. Uh, we feel that we've provided a lot here, uh, but they might ask for additional details. Uh, and then they might ask for, you know, additional information on our system. Uh, but even some of that we've tried to, you know, address in this report here with regards to return flows, with regards to historical operations and top of conservation flood control space in New Malonis. So we've tried to provide them everything we can in here, um, but we don't quite know what their response would be. Yeah, and I would just add, um, first of all, just commend Brad on, on synthesizing a tremendous amount of information and work that's been done over a long period of time and then adding a lot of his own um, value and analysis and, and um, information to it. He's done a great job here and I can tell you that Dave Cameron and Jeff Meyer, our hydrologist, and Mia, who have all been involved in this effort for many years now, all agree that this is a very good, very strong um, work product. Um, and we did, we, ha we discussed for the first time uh, in, in less detail, the, the, con the conserved water approach with the Bureau in our July meeting. And so I can't, I can't yet predict what their response to this is going to be, but I will tell you they were, um, the, the, the response to this approach in general was very favorable. It was the first, this is a departure from the, the approach that was used in the past and also a much greater level of detail. Um, gave them something to think about and chew on, and and their initial response, at least, was um, that they liked this approach better than, than than what we had come up with in the past. This is a, this is a work product we've been telling the bureau we are working on and we're going to deliver um, for all of my 18 months, 19 months here, however long I've been here, and probably before that. Yeah. Um, so to 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 be at this point now and ready to submit this report to the Bureau um, and, and start to get into some really substantive discussions with them on this proposal, I think is really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. Would you expect that, um, give it to them? Are you asking for our This draft is essentially finalized, but barring your approval, we would be prepared to send it then, I believe, immediately following this. We would remove the draft titles and, and uh, disclaimers on here and send it over. Yeah, and I think we wanted, obviously, this is a really um, important development, an important milestone in this process. Um, so we wanted to make sure to have this conversation with the board. We did discuss this draft with the Legal Affairs Committee a couple weeks, was it last week? Last yeah, week? Last week. Um, and so we just want to make sure that we have board support of the proposal before we send it to the Bureau. Um, but, and there was no specific deadline that was discussed in July when we met with them. Um, but we, what we indicated to them was we'd be following up within the next few months with a more detailed proposal. So we're, we're ready to do that. Because this has been a subject that we've discussed for years. And, you know, and I'm so happy to see it come to fruition. And the key that I think uh, we have on here is your use of the word conservation. 
because that is, you know, that's what everybody focuses on. <laughs> and so, to my understanding, what you're telling us is that all of this water that's coming from the Stanislaw that would have been lost now will be identified or will be uh, under our purview? Well, it's, it has the, the, the term conservation in this context applies to water that, our, uh, that we have saved within the Ebbets Pass service area and the Copperopolis service area. So we have actually reduced the amount of water that we consume in those service areas. And that delta is the water conservation that we're talking about. And that's water that we've made available to the system, and that, that's the water we want to store in the, in the reservoir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, M Michael's correct. And it's also worth pointing out that in this case, conservation doesn't necessarily just mean lawn turf replacement or changes of fixtures inside the house. This can also be our, our great leak, rep uh, leak repair programs that we've done in county, trying to make beneficial use of those. It's not essentially water that we've decreased in our consumption in these areas that we now would like to make beneficial use of that shouldn't harm downstream users because they've historically never used it anymore. That's water that uh, came from 3A. 3A, Reach right? 1, Techite, yeah. 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 all of that uh -huh. helps contribute uh -huh. to conserved water. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. is, is well, I've got a couple things, if I may, on, on this. Uh, um, we have been working on this for at least three or four years. We've been to Washington, D.C. on it three times. Yeah. Been to, uh, visiting the staff at the, the Bureau of Reclamation uh, in, in Sacramento as well as in Washington, D.C. We've been to the Department of Interior, which oversees the Bureau, um, and, and we've even brought a member of the Department of Interior out to uh, Copper Coast to do a, uh, uh, a, a, an inspection with us and, uh, and spend the day with them explaining the details of this, of this project. It's been a long time coming, right. um, and I'd like to, to make a motion that we by minute entry approvals, uh, approving submittal of the draft proposal to the Bureau of Reclamation at this at this point. Well, second. <clears throat> Further comment, questions. I just wanted to make sure the legal affairs committee did approve that. Yes. yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And they, as Scott yeah, was saying, they yeah. met on this we, several we times. Like yeah. Sorry, Scott. We we did meet last week. Um, uh, Director Davis was unable to, to make it, but uh, Director Thomas was, was there instead. And we did get a, a very nice uh, uh, proposal presentation by uh, Mr. Arnold. Uh, but, but Brad, this, this is much the details in this in this draft that I see here today is, is much more. Um, I mean, there's a lot of work went into this, and I do want to commend, commend you on that. I, I know uh, that we that this the target has changed, and the method of how we're approaching this this project has changed, and to uh, to come in and put this and put this together in your short time here. With, with, I know this is a brand new approach, way way different than what we were even talking about last year. We wanted to commend you and a uh, very very good and thorough job uh, from what I can see. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And, and also thanks to uh, Michael, other staff here at the district, as well as Dave Cameron, Jeff Meyer that, that Michael had mentioned earlier. They've been incredibly helpful in getting me up to speed, providing the background documentation memo to pull this together. So I feel really good about this. Of course, we don't know the Bureau's response, but there's a lot for them to digest in this. And so they will definitely need to pay attention and take it seriously. Well, thank you so much for the, for the expertise that you bring to this. <laughs> to this situation, yes, because it's, you know, putting the final touches or changing what we're doing or what has been proposed and so giving us an excellent product. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, I did ask for public comment. Mm -hmm. No public comment. No. <laughs> Is there any public on? Yes. Director Ryderman? Yes. Director Thomas? Yes. President Hunter. Yes. All right. Thank you, directors. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. It's time for reports. Oh, and Damon's got a beautiful handout. 
Are you too, you might be too far away. Is it the same? Is this what we're looking at? Yeah, we're looking at that. Yeah. That's fine. So here we go. Okay, awesome. I just want to, the reason I wanted to show you guys this, this, this main break here off Sparrow, um, and I don't know how we're going to say Sparrow, but just look at that, um, how the, the section of the AC main was eroded, so you can tell that that had been leaking for some time. What's the guy holding? That's a piece of the water main. Oh, wow. So you can see how it's all nice and smooth and kind of yeah. uh, rounded. It shows that we had a lead there for some time before it finally, quote unquote, gave up the ghost. And this one was a significant repair. As you can see, it was a T where two mains come together. Um, this was Dunn Road and Main, essentially. Next slide. Um, so this is a two inch water main repair on Crystal Court and Rancho. Um, just another illustration of. Uh, the challenges that we have with these two-inch water mains, a lot of them are made out of what's called Bluezell, which is a really thin wall pipe, and they're all over Rancho. So as we get an opportunity, we go in and cut out as much as we can. Uh, so this one uh, is an interesting one. So normally when you have an AC main break, which is also another oddity about the picture I showed you earlier, you have what's called a shear break. So the main, there'll be some sort of shift in the soil and it'll break just Literally like a perfect shear break like this in the pipe or something like that. This one was very interesting. Uh, we we had staff that heard this. Director Davis, you might have heard this. We had staff come. It was about 9:15, and a, a bunch of other folks heard this pop. It was like a firecracker, and people actually went out of the house and was like, "Ah, what was that?" And dogs were barking. Well, it was this water main break. <laughs> And, and uh, I should have put them in some bunch of order because the first one where the T was actually broke a couple days after this one. So I think whatever happened, whatever hammer occurred throughout the system caused this one and then the, the, the next one was the one on down in, in vain. But yeah, quite, quite a loud one and you can see it literally just blew the top of the water main off. So you missed it, Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. So this one was a very interesting one. This was in West Point, cross country. Just want to give you an idea of what it looked like. With, so we have two water mains next to each other. Um, they, were, they were not depicted to be so close together on the map. So one main failed. Uh, the kicker was very poorly poured and there was a lot of deflection, meaning the pipes didn't line up perfectly when they were plumbed together. They were, they were kind of deflected. And as they poured concrete over, over time, the pipe just popped out of the, the coupling is what happened. Well, the first line break caused the second line to break. So the kicker was poured on both of them. So as the first one kind of eroded all the soil underneath the kicker, the kicker, the way that it came down and broke the other one. One was raw, one was treated. So we let the, the we had to repair the treated and then, and then come back and flush and repair the raw. Uh, we repaired them both at the same time, but we left the raw off some time while we made sure that the tree was was uh, in good working order. Next slide, please. And that one, if, if I remember correctly, that was overnight. 
Yeah, this one, so this, as I the think, Saturday night, I think. Yeah, I think you can see in the pictures, as, as the, the pictures are taken, it gets darker and darker and darker. Because it took, it took a while to find it, because it was in the woods, and then it took a while to get equipment there. And then we had to expose it. And then when we shut the rock, the tree inside down, we spent an hour, an hour and a half, trying to understand why it was still leaking, until we realized, oh, there's another line here, and it's also leaking. And then, lucky me, I climbed down into the hole, and um, rather than just pull a chlorine residual analyzer, I took a drink of it. And I went, that's river water. <laughs> and I said, this is the raw land. So next slide, please. I think you see another picture. I think you have a, oh, unfortunately, as the pictures go through, it gets darker and darker and darker. Did, you learn, that, did you learn that technique in grade five operator yes. school? Is that your picture? I was going to say, that's a, I, I turns out that's that. a force pain. I, yeah, I would have been, been able to tell that. But that one, it was like, <laughs> so this is the sawmill PRV installation project. This was a, a re, this job was completed in house. Um, it was a very big job. We relocated a uh, pre -RV, PRV vault, approximately three quarters of a mile away where the existing was, one is and was failing. We've since uh, plumbed around that failing vault and we've installed this new vault, which allows us to take certain uh, services that are currently tied into a blue belt, blue belt name off the blue bell band and tie them into the AC system, which is the direct improvement. Um, if you can uh, push forward to the next slide. So it gives you an idea of what we did here. We had to do some piping and plumbing. So this is the connection to the pure V-Vault with the new blue C900 piping into the existing asbestos cement main, which is closest to us. And that is the inside of the pressure reducing valve vault. And so you see the, the small the small one on the left and the large one on the right. The large one is for the fire flow and the smaller one is for the day-to-day -day use. So they will automatically open up and close depending on downstream pressure, which is equal to water demand. Excuse me, and this is all of our crew that constructed that? Completed that is just house. beautiful. That is yeah. just top-notch. And, yeah. and, and this picture really um, illustrates the, thank you, Rebecca, the, our folks' ability to slope Slope of, I mean, that was just great work right there to clean that. I mean, because it was there's a lot of shale in the ground there under the road. It was a, it was quite the job. So they did an excellent job. Mm -hmm. And then just wanted to show you this is the recent installation of one of the generators that was purchased oh. through the capital outlay. Uh, this is the uh, 80 kW generator at the Wilseyville pressure station, which replaces the trailer mounted generator that lived on site for I'm not sure 10 years. That we can now take and deploy on a trailer as needed to different district facilities. So um, that is the department report. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. If you can go, just go back through through the slides where you you got um, a, a blue section of new pipe connected to looks like a, a, a trans. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. On the sawmill PRD. Yeah. Did, did you? Um, it looks like that. That uh, you, did you call that a transite pipe? Was it kind yes. Of, okay, but that's. It looks like to me that's an eight inch, and and the the blue pipe looks uh, significantly smaller. Is that a, going to a six or not? That that should be eight inch. Um, yeah, the PRV station, as you can see, that it's an eight by four, I believe, on the right. Mm -hmm. So that that pipe should all be eight. Okay. It just yeah. look, look a little smaller. Yeah. Okay. Hey, thank you, Damon. Good, good job. Really appreciate the uh, detailed report. And the photo. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Okay. General Manager. All right. A um, couple of items. The um, I think probably the most important one that we are excited about is we had our, uh, I think I mentioned to the board at the last meeting, uh, just to kick off. Um, meeting for the strategic plan with the strategic plan and consultants, uh, Becca and Stacy and myself. Um, and this was again just a just the, the mechanics of the process, not talking about you know policy or anything um, along those lines. Um, 
we're going to bring the rest of the management team into it. They're working on the, 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 the sort of the legwork they're doing in advance is working on a survey that will go out to all staff and help and, and then working on a schedule that takes us we did we kind of roughed in a schedule um, that if if we stick to that schedule um, approval would be on director thomas's birthday i think in march uh, as the way it was the way it would will play out right now so we'll see no, if we stick to that or I, not. I won't be here <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, that's still a very rough schedule and between now and the first so there's a, there's a series of i think three board workshops um, before the first workshop though we want to complete the survey and each of the board members would be individually interviewed by the consultants um, so there will be a lot of opportunity for the board to drive this process um, and then, but we'll also make sure we get input from all different levels of the organization, which was another priority for us. Um, so our next meeting with them is um, to discuss the surveys on the 26th, which also happens to be Jessica Self's first day. So uh -huh. she'll be thrown right into that. Um, and we're, we're very excited to get her um, on board. Um, the reminder, October 20th, Region 3, we're uh, sponsoring a, a event to discuss forest management and biomass utilization um, that I think Becca has sent you the, the update on. Um, and you are the moderator? Yeah, I'll be moderating that mm -hmm. one, and there's some really interesting folks, so I'll try to get as much out of them as I can. Um, the We had a another project planning meeting on the for the meter replacement project uh, with the Mueller team and we are you know a very sharp responsive group of of uh, people that we're dealing with uh, a big topic of discussion is the sequencing and making sure that when we implement and you know, we transition from Springbrook to Tyler that that interfaces with the new meters and so um, we're still hammering that out, but they are very eager to start and move forward uh, as quickly as possible. So um, I think things are moving along well on that front. Um, we had a, a meeting up at Hunter's with the Utica staff to discuss the, the, we have preliminary approval of a FEMA grant to replace our intake pumps up there. And so we're just looking at the different designs and making sure that they're on board with, they have to, you know, it's their dam. So they'll have to approve whatever it is that we implement up there. Um, we already mentioned the legal affairs committee meeting. There was also an EPOC meeting um, and was able to provide them. That's a great group to get a lot of information out to the whole Evans Pass area. So with all the construction we have going up, uh, going on up there right now, those meetings have been really important um, to keep those uh, HOAs involved and informed. Um, <coughs> we had a s another meeting with Utica staff at, uh, at Utica, mostly to talk about slurry line, but we talked about all sorts of other stuff as well. Um, and I think we're getting close on a, a wheeling agreement for the slurry line. Um, and we'll hopefully be, I think probably uh, have one of the two by two meetings that we had discontinued from before and then bring back the uh, agreement to the full board. Um, so I would like to get that done this, this calendar year. Um, if uh, Damon talked about some of the construction projects, we're all, uh, cutting over to the new Reach One pipeline. Um, still in the process of that. We already have cut over to the new Techite line, so that old Techite line is out of service now, which is a big relief to everybody. Um, we'll be bringing back to the board uh, proposals from an RFP for engineering and design of the West Point Wilseyville Wastewater Consolidation Grant project, um, probably at the next board meeting. Um, so a lot of uh, projects getting wrapped up and more in the pipeline that we'll be starting on um, just on the heels of those. Uh, lastly, I think really quick, if you have any um, strong affinities for this oak tree behind you, uh, say your goodbyes. It will no longer be here at your next board meeting, hopefully, along with some other trees around the property that we'll be cleaning up. So, but it's dead. 
Mm-hmm. I, I saw ribbons on a couple of trees out there at the corner. Are you taking those down too? Yeah. He's selling yeah. the wood. There's a, a bull pine that's leaning over the road. Yeah. There's an oak tree, a dead oak tree down there, and there's a willow that I think that's in the drainage. Um, and then a, a huge branch fell off of right. this other oak tree back here. So that one will get cleaned up. Hopefully we'll be able to save that one, but um, try to lighten the load a little bit. So there'll be some tree work here in the next week or so. Okay, Damon and his crew are cutting all those trees down? Mm-hmm. No, sir. They're too close to the buildings. We don't, we don't, we're not going to let them do that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's it. Okay. Uh, I have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Um, you recall um, there was a uh, the special districts was advertising a, 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 like a Zoom meeting on mm, how, to, how to approach and... and uh, uh, rate, uh, rate hearings, or, or just uh, did you ever look in? I was to, not able to attend the CSDA. Was it a CSDA event? Well, it was. A, it, it's tomorrow. It was scheduled oh, to occur tomorrow. Uh, it's not on my calendar right now. Okay. All right. Look at it. CSDA. Yeah, special districts. Um, and um, do you have anything that you want to share with us about the TS West uh, lateral failures? Um, not presently. We'll not be presently. Up on that shortly. Okay. Um, I saw somebody on public TV that looked quite a bit like you. Oh, did they finally run that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. That interview happened a, a month or so ago, uh, and I hadn't seen it yet. So. Yeah, John Hamilton did a good job. Not so much you, but uh, yeah. No, that's, <laughs> of course. I mean, that's that's hard. He, he kind of teed up some softball questions for you. Right. <laughs> or, <laughs> I did mention them to them because I, 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 I hadn't seen it on that they had started running it. They gave me an a advanced copy, I guess you would call it. Yeah. Uh, and it, call, it says CCWD director. And I, I, I know. I, oh, I, was, I, I, don't I was, know was going to. You corrected I that. I tried to get them to change it. I don't know if they were able to or not. That no, was, it, it ran as director. Oh, so. All right. Yeah. Well. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, I apologize you, you, you won't. Hopefully it doesn't create any confusion. Um, well, um, it, it won't, um, uh, it'll likely precipitate some demands uh, that you be, uh, somebody run against you. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, like in this didn't case. Mean to yeah. myself, didn't mean to give myself a promotion there. <laughs> um, What's happening with the, um, oh, uh, I, the reason I'm asking this question is there's a uh, contractor friend of mine that's very anxious to, to bid on that uh, backhoe. What's, what's the latest on that? Good question. I'd have to follow up with Rebecca to see where we're at with that. Um, okay. I'm not sure where the process is right now. And my final question is, are we going to, uh, when, when Jessica, is there, yes. yeah, when she gets on, on board here, are we going to have a new org chart soon? Uh, the org chart has changed a few times this year, I think, and it gets updated uh, regularly, but we can make sure the board gets uh, yeah. a, current, a current copy. Yeah, okay. please. Uh-huh. Um, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That webinar is at 1 o'clock tomorrow. If that's something to do. Did you have to sign up for it? or? Yeah, it's $25 for a member and $40 for a non-member. I... I I won't be able to do it, but I was just wondering if the, somebody on staff should maybe. Yeah, I uh, think I forwarded it to some folks, but I'll check in and see if anybody's going to be able to attend. Tonight. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Okay. Jeff? Uh, I uh, nothing to report. <laughs> uh, How'd you do? Well, I, I was going to get with Rebecca and do a slideshow, but. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is a beast. So did you did you lose your razor back there or what? Yeah, no, yeah. I I gotta shave it though. <laughs> um, no, the one thing I I I, uh, I did uh, I, I would like to say that I'm, I'm thankful that the SEIU uh, 1021 did uh, endorsed by uh, candidacy, so I'm proud to have their support. So that's oh. uh, that was a positive thing, and uh, we'll see what happens here in a few weeks. Oh, that's Great. Yeah, it's oh, very nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. Cindy? 
So you did all three? Or yeah. How many yeah. Okay. I was four. Hmm? Oh, four. Okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't hear about that thing from CSDA, so I would have been interested in that one. <coughs> it's still time. Is CCWD a member of CSDA? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. So normally we get things. It, it came in an email two or three weeks ago. So. I just went on the website. We'll see. Um, Scott. Uh, thank you. I have nothing to report. Okay. Um, oh, I just had one question, and, and Damon left. Um, we have uh, had little um, problem with the new to the old on Reach One, uh, the cutovers or whatever you call them. Problem. I mean, it, for the most part, it's gone really well. Um, we've had a few folks that we, we, we seem to, no matter how hard we try to reach every single customer when we have an outage, when it's a big outage, somehow we, we seem to still be missing people. Um, and I think it's just a function of old data in the system. So we, we try to clean those up when we can. So I think there were a few folks that didn't get notified um in one of the outages but for the most part it's been it's been it's gone really well in fact we just got a request from mazingo today um to move up the date of the last tie-in oh um, wonderful because they're they're ahead of schedule they think they can get the last two done on the same day our concern was those notifications but the only customer affected by that last day is the forest service work center up there across from hunter's dam road uh, so we think we can manage that notification and cool. they'll be done, I think, with the final tie-in. I think that pushes them up, if I remember correctly, the 23rd. Because uh, it was October 31st. And they still have some work to do after the 23rd, but, um, but I think we'll be f the, the final tie-ins will be done on the, I think it's the 23rd. I have mm -hmm. to double check that date. But yeah, they're, they're actually, I don't want to say ahead of schedule because initially this was all supposed to be done <laughs> by now. Well, but yeah. As far as the, the, schedule that, the, <laughs> the schedule that we laid out for this month um, at the end of last month, they're, they're ahead of that schedule. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so. they did work on the holiday. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. working. Most of the most of the customers are off in the mm -hmm. new line now. Yeah, because I know we had our inspector out there because I was driving down and I saw that uh, traffic delay is minimal. Yeah. Yep, and hopefully coming to an end here soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, um, Ma Michael, I did have one other question. Sure. Um, PG&E was for, um, anticipating or warning about a PSPS event, including Calaveras County Fort this afternoon. Did you? Have you heard him? I'm looking at the wind. There's no wind out there. My understanding is it's only a very small couple hundred customers, I think, in the West Point area. Um, I don't think it will affect our treatment plant. It might affect some of our uh, other facilities up there, but I can, I'll double check with operations. But it would be a really small impact. Okay, well, will you call my wife? She made me promise her I would bring the generator home. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let her know. <laughs> yeah, if. When we get here or get word of it at CCWD, <laughs> can you right. pass it on <laughs> it to the affected right. directors so that we know sure. that um, we're going to be affected by PS? Oh, PS. We might not be home, but you know, <laughs> if you'll let us know. Sure. Okay. Um, Information, future agenda items? Anything? No? If you could bring, um, if you'll have the information for the um, purchasing agent, if you have the information on the stage or whatever, it would be kind of interesting. 
Yeah, that's something that we, I've discussed with him from the very beginning to make sure that, that he's prepared to provide that uh, update. Mean, I mean, I Yeah, we'll make sure it's timed right, but like I said, he's been on notice from the very, from day one that he's going to have to provide updates to the board as to the effectiveness of that, um, of that position. So um, it, it shouldn't be, and I think it's been about a year now. Um, so we'll make sure we bring an update. I think we'll make sure we bring an update to the board. Okay. So the next board meeting, Wednesday, October 28th at 1 o'clock, uh, instead of nine because we're changing time right aren't we changing oh november november okay excuse no. me Clock okay search. Clock and then wednesday change. november 11th will be our regular meeting yes okay item nine closed session conference with legal counsel potential litigation and then 9b public employee performance evaluation government code gm Okay. We're ready. Adjourn to close session. Are we going? Let's wait. Let's stay here, but wait till the camera's off. Oh, and we're muted. I'll be right back.